Well, happy Sunday, everybody. Uh, we're going to do another tile test today with the two new resin art colors, Clementine and Black Cherry Wine. See if I can get close up. I've already mixed these guys. These are my lab samples, so I don't exactly have jars to show you yet. We'll be filling them Monday. Here is your in-your-face clementine orange. I'd rather make it richer than not rich. You can always thin that down a little bit with some gold if it's too dark. And if we can get a good idea of this uh, black cherry wine. We've been getting asked a lot for burgundy or wine and I keep directing people to the red plum because the red plum is like a dry Merlot. But when people think wine, they're also thinking more in this Christmas, I don't even know, it's not really a black cherry because black cherry is more red, um, but black cherry wine, I mean cherry itself is more red, black cherry is not. Um, cranberry is the one that's more red, sorry for Maya getting that mixed up, like the cranberry is really, really red. Black cherry can be dark. Um, so hopefully this fits. I have just a little tiny bit of the golden diamond mixed up, my favorite new gold. A little bit of aquamarine, because I think it's gonna pop with both these colors. Blue, obviously, blue is a compliment. I shouldn't say obviously, my apologies. Blue is a compliment to orange. Uh, teal is a blue-green. Now this is more in the green family, and the reason why I picked it is because then it's a natural complement to the, the green-blue part of this is a complement to the, the red in the cranberry. So that's why I picked those colors. And then I mix some of my Golden Autumn 50-50 with the Spiced Ginger. The Golden Autumn is a red-brown. So if you want it more burnt autumn orange, add a little bit of Spiced Ginger, get this color. You want it more of a burnt umber, add some of our blue and it'll take that golden autumn down to a deeper brown. So these guys are made to mix. So we're going to test them on both surfaces. I'm going to start on the white first just so we can get a, get a clean idea of these colors. ourselves as close up on this tile as we can get before we get going so you can really get those colors in your face and see them. Oops, now I normally lubricate the tile, wasn't thinking. I like to lubricate my surface first so the paint can float. This time we're just going to have to depend on putting enough resin on here to do it. Um, I wanted to mix this with some of my autumn brown. That's still, you know, that autumn brown is still a little bit orange. I could deepen that if I really wanted to. You know what I'm thinking about doing? I want a, I want a lace color. So, as I did in one of my earlier videos, adding a little bit of the stone coat white to some of my colors to lighten it, I'm going to add a drop of the stone coat black to my brown. Hopefully, I can open this up. Be very careful when you're with your container with you when you close. You don't want any drips on the edges because then it makes it hard to open up. So I'm simply taking a drop, a tiny little drop. I'm dripping all the excess off. I'm still dripping more off. What's ever dropping? Okay. As soon as it stops dripping, nothing's dripping. I'm putting that into my brown. Okay, let me close the stone coat container closed. Let me mix this in. Oh, I got two spoons in here. So, first of all, it's going to deepen that brown for me. But then it's also going to create some lacing color. I think that's the one with the black. I can't tell which one has the black on it. Oops, that was it. Give me one second. Made it a little bit more smoky. 
didn't really deepen it much. A little bit. It's not quite as orange. I think I'm, I was, I, I'd rather have to add more than less. So one more time. This time I'll be smart. <laughs> I'm gonna take my spoon out of here. I know we're supposed to preview the Clementine and the, and the black cherry wine, and we will. But the idea that you can add a little bit of the stone coat color to enrich something and create lacing is also really a fun technique. So again, I'm just letting a little bit drip, everything drip off the spoon. It's, it's off here to the side of the camera. I don't wanna re keep adjusting my camera back and forth and make you guys dizzy. Oh, look at that. Really nice dark brown. Still very golden, real shimmery, so I didn't lose too much of the shimmer. Let's see what happens. I have plenty of brown on this piece, so I'll probably be, be using, using our lacing brown somewhere else. Um, let's get some of this cranberry down. I know I usually use white and black. What's wrong with me? <laughs> oh, we're off camera slightly. There we go. My apologies. I didn't mean to do that. When you put aquamarine next to the orange, you know you're going to get some greens because the yellow and that aqua will mix. But let's see what we get. I've got enough resin on there. I'll be to kill a horse. Tiles are unforgiving. Um, they are like a glass surface, so you're limited to what you can actually put on it. I think I will add a tiny bit of clear to the edges here. Use my handy dandy. I love these little tools. They use them for hair coloring, but they're made out of silicone. And so you can move resin around, especially little bits of resin, like you just want to do a lubricant. Yeah, I know I usually have black and white going, but and then I think, just for the fun of it, I'm going to add some of the golden diamond right here. And more of the brown since I have more room. Now this is that brown that has the black in it. I can see the difference. Can you see the difference? See the difference in the shade between this brown, Golden Autumn 50-50 with the Spice Ginger, and this or I've added a couple drops of the stone coat black. What a beautiful brown. And it will lace. It should lace if I push these colors over it. it's not too hot. You never want to get your resin too hot if you're going to try to do a swipe. But I just want to see what happens if I swipe over that brown. Now that uh, resin's a little hot. I'm pulling off everything that my stick just picked up and dropping it right back here. That's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. Let's see if we get any cells off of that.
I am digging that cranberry and that uh, cranberry, the black cherry wine and that aquamarine. But we're getting some really interesting stuff going on here with the aquamarine, that stone coat black and golden autumn mixed brown I made. Even though I'm, even what I scraped off is kind of pretty. While this sits, we're gonna swap with the black towel I have sitting right next to it. Okay, I'll move this out. It's just right next to it. Kind of do the same thing, but I'm going to put the black cherry wine in the center. That's that aquamarine. This is the clementine. Oh, clementine. How's that song go? There's a song about clementine. I can't remember it right now. I was singing it this morning. Crazy. A little bit of gold in between. A beautiful golden diamond. By the way, Golden Diamond is permanently in the line. Mystery Gold is gone. So if you guys happen to go back and look for Mystery Gold, sometimes these limited edition colors are only going to last for a short while. And then we'll bring in something else. Oh, I was going to put the brown there, and then I changed my mind. <laughs> Women, we change our minds a lot. Okay, now remember, I don't have that orangey brown. I only have this brown brown now to work with. make gold a little bit more dominating over here because then I can put the brown on this side and blow that gold and that orange over into that brown. Clementine black cherry wine. I gotta be able to repeat this. I gotta say it a couple times. Okay so just for a little insurance I'm going to add some clear as soon as I get a little bit of this custom, my stone coat brown down, my brown made with stone coat black. I'm loving this color. It's great for the fall. I'm going to put a little clear here on the edges just to lubricate this puppy. Just so it'll flow over the edge. Resin will always go where other resin's been. Same thing with acrylic. You always want to prime the corner of your canvases when you're paint pouring so when you go to tilt it will go over the sides or it'll think it's already gone over the sides and you don't have to use a full tilt to lose your pattern. So, okay, let's uh, clean up the resin off my hand with a little alcohol. I always keep a bottle, of, a spray bottle of alcohol on your table is you do not want to pick up your heat gun with a little bit of resin on your hand like I have had so many times and then you glue the button shut. Already done it. This is my second heat gun. interesting. Now I wish I had more, to, more of that brown in there. Let me see if I can get a close-up of this. I don't really want to move it because it's sopping wet. This is interesting, but this is even more interesting. That cranberry blending into the clementine, blending into the gold over the brown. I'm getting some really interesting patterns of the golden diamond going into that custom brown. I wonder if I can tilt some of that back. 
you guys can then see what's happening there. Those patterns are stunning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see this corner here, right here where my finger is? Wow. I'll tilt this back so we don't lose all of our brown. Let's see if I can tilt some of it in without actually losing what's in my corner now. Getting some real interesting lacing. Okay, let's keep on. I'm going to put these aside. I've got two more to go. I've got two more to go. While we got paint, here's that first one. Check out that lacing that's happening here. So now I know I'm going to use the brand a little bit more in the center so I can create more lacing because it's my only lace color. These gloves always wear two pairs of gloves. <laughs> Pop another one on real quick with my right hand in case I need to pick up the heat gun. Okay, so this time I liked that black cherry in the center. I liked the clementine up next to the black cherry wine. This is kind of repeating what I, I like there. The golden diamond was gorgeous blowing into that. God, what a beautiful effect we're getting off the golden diamond. Going into this brown. Wow, my runoff is gorgeous. Ugh. The um, stuff that dripped. I try not to drip, but you know, you're still going to have some drips. I'm going to put a tiny bit of clear on the edge here to lubricate this. And there's that aquamarine. Some more of that brown, actually what's left of the brown. I'm going to spread this out. On a regular canvas we'd be putting it out. We don't necessarily flood it. I don't need too much to drip. So I'm going to use every bit I've got here. I'm really enjoying this color combination. I know there's a little glare in the camera. Apologies. See how much more color of each one we've got. I've got some cranberry, I've got a little orange. I think I'm gonna add some cranberry in here, even though it's gonna float over and then go back since I have so much extra. And I need some paint here, so I'm grabbing some of the runoff that dripped below. Look how pretty that is. And I'm just kind of covering my edges, just like you do on an acrylic pour. You make sure your edges are covered for the tilt. And of course I use my finger instead of my little tools. I go wipe my hand off. With alcohol or I'll ruin my heat gun again. I'm terrible on heat guns. Okay, I want to get more patterns and so by Moving the stone coat mixture closer to the center. Okay, again, I just realized I wanted to swipe it. I hope I didn't get too hot again.
feel like I want to swipe over here, but blow over here. And of course that didn't work out. I didn't swipe at all. It was way too liquid. Keep forgetting, you know. And the other thing is the tile heats up real fast. It only needs just a, just a hit. I'm kind of liking how that cranberry is right here on the edge where the brown went over it. And those cells are popping up nice. Very nice. Oh yeah, almost looks like little moon rocks. So that's interesting, making our own custom cell color. Once again, golden autumn brown, 50-50 with the spiced ginger. I'm looking for the jar. Yeah, golden autumn brown. Mix 50-50 with my spiced ginger, right? Then just a couple drops of the stone coat black and it makes it a selling color of the cell for you. You can move your colors over it and you'll get patterns from doing that. So I'm excited about this color combination. I'm hoping we got enough to do one more tile. Yes, I had two white, two black just to see what's going to happen. So. I'm going to go for broke all the rest of the clementine. Incidentally, for the two tiles, I think I used um, five ounces. About five ounces of resin for both tiles is what my total mix is. Clementine. And then let's use our absolutely stunning aquamarine. It's definitely been giving us that pop of color that we need. It gives us the break from the cranberry and the orange. It's that nice little highlight. Let's see what other colors. Uh, golden diamond. I've used everything. Oh, the cranberry. Yes. Okay, this time I'm going to put the cranberry to the right of the aquamarine. See what kind of different effects we get. Because I've been putting the cranberry next to the clementine. That orange. They both share red in their mix which means they can blend into each other pretty easily without making mud, even though one's an orange and one technically looks purple. They both share the common denominator red. So because our colors are kind of clean, uh, it, it helps. Get this moved out and spread this out as much as I can. on each edge. My little tool, my cool little tool. And then all the brown I have left, I'll put right here. I think I've used almost every drop except the gold. So this is the golden diamond. Kind of let it fill in all the little spots we got left where there's holes. And that's the rest of the golden diamond. 
going to time to tap the color around so we don't have any holes. Okay. Okay, now, technically that's warm enough for a swipe. And hopefully not too hot. So we're going to try swiping just with the popsicle stick. Oops, that's too heavy. I need to actually lift it up. I want it to glide over that brown. Now, I only have that one corner with the brown on it, so I, I just swiped into that one bit that had that stone coat combo left. I had a little bit of that left. And I'm getting some interesting selling here. It's going to take a while for it to pop up. Very interesting selling. So we're going to do something quick here while we still have a little tiny bit of resin. I have some clear that I saved. And a lot of people are curious about those little droplet things I'm doing. So I'm going to actually, I have a just enough clear resin mixed up to make a few little colors of it. Okay, so these are little three quarter ounce salsa cups. Okay, I've got two of them here. I'm going to pour a little bit of resin in each one of them. My resin's going to look tinted because I accidentally fixed up one of the sides of those tiles with a popsicle stick and so my resin's just slightly tinted with, I think, that clementine color. So I don't have a full three quarters ounce left of each one of these. I don't. I'd say it's probably about half. Okay, then I've got the, right now I'm having this blinged gold and using the interference blue has been getting me, which is, this is the satin. If you look at it, the particulates are very light and delicate like white powder, like face powder. And this is the blinged gold, the sparkle. See how the particulates are bigger and it's much more glittery, okay? But you don't need very much of this. You use just a fraction of what you use with the regular resin art. So this little thing holds about an eighth of a teaspoon. This has to be a quarter of that, right? And I'm going into the gold. That's it. And I might even have too much in there. I've reserved a tiny bit of extra resin in case this mix-up comes too strong. Now, I can add a little bit more of the interference blue. It's not going to dominate as much. It will look milky, kind of ethereal when you're dropping it, but it dries clear. Uh, so here is what I'm doing. Now they are straight mica. You've got to mix them slow, just like you would any other straight mica. They can be used for any kind of acrylic paint pouring or resin. So the blingets are just a straight artist mica. So here's your blue. Here's the big sparkle gold. Ooh, there's something on that spin in there. Oops. Here's that big sparkle gold. You see how bright that is? Let's see if I can get a really. This is pretty close though. See how see it's floating in there? It's not completely white. You want some space between there. You want just enough in there to tint it. Where this looks fairly opaque because the mica is satin, okay? Now I've got a tile here, one of my tiles I just did. 
I really like this combination, so <laughs> hope we don't screw this up. And I'm going to start with the gold. Now the gold is really pretty on top of warm colors, but we're going to kind of do a pattern right up in here and see what happens. So you guys can see me do this firsthand. I'm just gently dropping them in there. Now on big pieces, I ran into trouble because if I'm sitting, I'm dragging my arm over the piece. If I'm standing, your back and get tired. I tried using a pipette. It didn't work because it was too skinny, but duh, why didn't I cut the tip off? So we're going to try it with the tip off. This may be too much of a tip off. I mean, I can experiment, you know, with more or less. But if I can get some even droplets with this stuff, why not? Because the pipettes are cheap. You, oh yeah, that's perfect. You throw them away. Actually pulls up pretty darn fast. That thing's full. I want you to see what it looks like on top of all the different colors. I'm loving it on this black cherry wine. It is beautiful. Look how this black cherry wine is hugging that gold. Oh my goodness. I'm getting excited making my droplets a little bit too big. Sorry. See with tiles, they're unforgiving. There's only so much resins you can put on there. So if you're going to do this on top of you know, tiles or coasters for Christmas. Less is more. My drops are actually a little bit big. I'm loving that texture and patterns that's popping up here from the mandarin. Uh, I'm calling one it mandarin citrine, I'm sorry. <laughs> from the clementine and the black cherry wine. I'm spacing them out because I think I might be able to put a secondary sparkle color in between them. I'm going to experiment if I've got enough left. See how it looks kind of faint going over that turquoise? The aquamarine? It's really interesting. You can experiment with what it looks like on different colors. We've not done it on the brown even though kind of mess up my pattern. I'm not anywhere near a brown, but okay, so let's see what I got left. I'm gonna draw up every bit I got left. Now I'm gonna have to scrape it out. Good news, the little pipette will kind of cut the drop. If you think you get too much out, you can use the pipette to kind of drop up, pull up the drop so it does so it stops dripping. Okay. So that's kind of interesting to see what the variation is with the uh, black cherry wine hugging it. You kind of get that purple ring up here. Where I'm loving where the blue and the aquamarine and the black cherry is this one 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 cell up here. How do we get to this? This one cell up here is starting to pick up this really interesting little bit of periwinkle. And I can see the ghostiness of the aquamarine coming all the way through those. You see that? That's really cool. Let's see if I got one more to go up over here in this blue. There's some lacing up here I kind of want to drop into and see what happens. That's the other thing. You go on top of other lacing you're magnifying and kind of bring it to the forefront what's happening on your piece. Okay, so now let's see what happens when... Okay, so that was gold. I hope I don't mess this up. I'm gonna stick with warm, so I'm gonna do a little bit of violet of the big sparkle stuff. Wait a minute, is that the big sparkle stuff? Yeah, this is the bigger particulate. So I'm mixing a little bit more in that cup I was just using with the gold. I 
know now I'm doing it off camera guys because I don't want to keep taking this camera in and out and making you dizzy so just bear with me I'm mixing up some of the bling it sparkling violet and that same cup I had with gold it doesn't matter if I use the same cup so I'm putting the rest of the resin in here see that now we're done with our resin and then just a pinch remember just a tiny pinch the teeniest bit on the edge of the spoon dump it in and mix it and you should see plenty of clear floating through it in order for this to work you don't want it too strong okay now the tile's getting mad at me stuff starting to drip so it's probably already telling me i've used too much rest on this tile but it's good for you guys to see the process, so, you know, I don't mind. All right, so I left some gaps. Let me um, cut a different pipette. That is pretty awesome. Look what the purple did. Look what the violet's doing compared to the gold. Do you see that? So I'm going to start adding small drops in between these gold ones to add some more interest into what I'm doing. Wow, look at what happens by using the violet. That is so pretty. Yeah, I decided to stick with two warm colors and then we'll put like the cooler blue on top of all of them, both of them. And see, because the blue, if you look at Australian opals, there's that transparent -y kind of blue effect on the top of most of them. I realize this is, we're not really making opals, but if somebody was trying to get an opal effect on their piece, pick a specific section that you find interesting or do something crazy like me, almost the whole darn tile. I realize this is a tile test and a true experiment to show you how these colors work. I'm loving that violet where the clementine is. Beautiful thing, orange and violet is pretty darn compatible with each other. crazy all the different colors that come up because the the sparkle the bling it sparkle is transparent so it's going to allow the color from beneath to come through it's going to allow the color from on top to <laughs> sparkle like crazy this is really fun Ooh, there's a spot right here i haven't hit yet and it's got some teal in it i wonder what's going to happen if i put teal on top of that turquoise and that orange see how that's hugging that right here that turquoise that's good to know how that turquoise and the bling it violet works those are really pretty okay so now i'm going to use the same little thingy my little uh pipette that i'm going to toss this will be thrown away they're cheap though you can get a hundred of them on amazon for i don't know seven bucks or not much Okay, so I'm starting to drop the blue on top of the other droplets. Now, when I was doing a big piece, this is where I ran into trouble where my body got tired. But using this uh, cut trimmed pipette, I can already see how this is going to save everything. I know these are going to look a little weird at first because they look so white on the top. But eventually the colors from beneath come through the blue is transparent, just as is the sparkling ones. Oh, I put a little too much on that one. I don't need to be squeezing so much out. I want this, actually I want smaller is better. I don't really want them big. I know I don't want them to look like a big giant blue drop in the middle of something else, but you also have to allow the self-leveling properties of your resin to do its thing. Isn't 
It's crazy how the resin accepts the drop of resin on top and it still allows the color from beneath to hug what, whatever you're dropping in. I think I told you in one of my last little videos, even clear will give you an interesting effect. Just dropping clear on an area you've already put color down creates texture. And I guess that's kind of been my thing since I started playing around with resin. I got so excited the first time I accidentally dropped a drop of resin somewhere and I went, oh, look what just happened. Oh my goodness. Look how pretty that is. So I'm just kind of like hitting the center of all of these with this blue. Yeah, it looks a little bit bright. I know I've gone a little overboard on this. <laughs> I'm only warming it just to warm it. Now, <clears throat> again, it, it feels a little bit like big white whatevers, big white blobs. I can see the transparency of the blue. I'm using a little, uh, these are like little wooden stick stirs you can get a thousand in a box for a couple dollars. Restaurant supply. And I can just manipulate. That's one thing, you can manipulate the shape of these things, how fat you want them to go. interesting to see once this dries. I am going to pop this video up before it dries. I see I missed one spot. Um, I think it's important you guys see the Clementine test more so than me in the video with what this looks like dry. You guys get the point. I, I'd like to stretch it. But I don't know if I want to stretch it all the way across or if I want to pour some of these off. Again, I did this bling it test for you guys. I don't think I'd ever do a piece where the whole thing was covered. Maybe I might have a big section where it's covered where you like put glitter on a geode or maybe you do a section where you got rocks and pebbles. But for this, for the practice, for the purpose of this video, I thought it was important that you see what it looks like on the clementine, on the black cherry wine, on the aquamarine where it's in the brown. What do the bling it violet drops to versus the gold where you can see that really sparkly shimmery gold underneath so let's get a uh, i'll try to pan out here and get all four tiles in here so you can see everybody else everything else that's changed Well, there you have it. There's the tile test of the Clementine Black Cherry Wine with a little bit of the Aquamarine for an accent and Golden Autumn mixed with Spice Ginger and a little bit of Stone Coat Black so we could get some beautiful lacing effects. See you guys later. Bye.